Okay, at this time we will uh, resume our meeting in open session. We just exited an executive session for the purposes of discussing contractual matters and potential legal issues. Uh, at this time, I'd like to first, I'd like to personally, I wasn't be able to be here the last meeting. I was winging my way back from Sicily. <laughs> but I would like to acknowledge Mr. Cliff Bowers. I'm glad he's here tonight um, for his nine years of service to the community and to the committee. He did a wonderful job. and. Uh, I just wanted to personally thank you, Cliff, for all the time and effort you put in on this committee to make this uh, uh, a top-notch uh, education system. So thank you. Um, secondly, um, I'd like to thank the committee members for electing me chair as I enter my 14th glorious year here on the North Rain School Committee. I believe Mr. Venezia is starting his 20th year no, no, tonight. No, 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 18. But Only 18? Yeah. Did oh. you tell him that? You're chairman because nobody else wanted to run for it. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm chairman because no one else wanted it. <laughs> so getting on to the regular agenda at this time, uh, if there's anybody here to be heard uh, on any issues that are not on the agenda, please raise your hand. Seeing none. Uh, next we have Jensen Kayatamatam. <laughs> with the student report, which will be his last student report, I believe, correct? Yes, it will be. <laughs> Jensen? Um, so for sports, uh, spring sports are coming down to the home stretch, and it'll be winding uh, down soon. Uh, the boys and girls track teams are Cape Ann League champions as they both as they defeated Ipswich and Linfield in their last meet. The boys re remain undefeated as they prepare for the Cape Ann League Open on Saturday at 9 a.m. in Triton on their new track. Uh, baseball baseball had their senior game on Saturday, um, and girls softball remains undefeated as they beat Masco last Friday. Girls, uh, girls lacrosse has a game today versus Ipswich, and girls tennis, the girls tennis team had a match today at Pentucket. Um, overall, the sports are going very well. Um, in academic <coughs> matters, the NHS induction happened this past Thursday on May 11th. Uh, student recognition night will be held on Thursday, May 25th, um, and student art show was held uh, on May 1st to May 5th with a special reception on May 3rd. Uh, student council and class officer elections will be held this coming week, or uh, this next week. Prom tickets for the senior prom have been on sale this pa uh, this past week, and it will be held at the Burlington Marriott. And uh, also, the North Shore Chamber of Commerce held its special dinner for the top 5% of students um, from over 40 high school uh, in the nearby areas on May 9th. Uh, MCAS will be administered for sophomores starting tomorrow and extending into Wednesday. And a few other important dates are June 2nd will be the last day for seniors, uh, and there are only 13 days left until, until that date. Uh, June 4th is the baccalaureate, which will be held by local parishes in our community uh, that celebrates the spiritual side of graduating from high school. Um, June 5th will be the senior prom at the Burlington Marriott, and June 6th will be sports awards, uh, followed by June 9th, where seniors will graduate um, and program will start at 6.15. Tickets for this special day have been on sale starting today. Uh, lastly, in performing arts, there, the, there was a sing, the Sing Fling is coming up soon. And for my student report, I'd like to present this box I made in um, ceramics. Oh. Um, we were asked to use slabs of clay and flatten them and then uh, bevel the sides, which is like cutting at a 45 degree angle, and then, uh, and then scoring it, which is like um, making marks inside the clay so that when you stick them together, they stick a little bit better. So when they get fired in, uh, in the kiln, it gets really hot and then it sticks all together. So um, I have a box made by doing that. And um, one of the things they added us, they asked us to add to, Miss Atlas asked us to add was like relief. So I included uh, little coils that kind of like stick outside of the box and then this, this pattern that I found that I was able to create on a separate piece of clay and then attach to the box. Um, so pass this around. Any questions for? It looks like Ming, Ming Dynasty quality. <laughs> yeah, that could be worth something. So when you said you were you were mortaring the the two sides together, yep. was that like a dovetail type thing where they fit into each other, or just um, simple notches that? It was kind of like it was kind of like you cut it at a forty five degree angle, so then when you stick it together, they like they kind of like meet each other like perfectly, mm -hmm. and then the when we score it, which is like making like like uh, lines in the clay, just so that the just so that they kind of like interlock, just so like there's a kind of like a strong friction in between them. So you stick those together, and then you're able to add a little bit more clay and like mold the sides together on the sides uh, together. So, 
Is it, did, did you just do something in track set a school record or something like that? Yeah. yeah what was the, the what was the record? In? Uh, it was in the pole vault and the SMR. So in the pole vault, um, three uh, three of us, uh, myself, Nick Carpenter, and a sophomore, Joey McCarthy, Joe McCarthy, um, cleared a total of 29 feet uh, and a half, 29.5, 25, 29 and a half feet. Yeah. So, so that, that was, was that relay. That, that was, was a relay. relay. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And then the SMR broke a. Pretty old school record. I want to say, I want to say 18 years, but I might be wrong. It's the SMR. The SMR. So that's a sprint medley relay. So that. Okay. So there are two different kinds of that. So there's the 800, where you have someone that runs a 400, uh, a 200, a 200, and a 100. So those four different people <laughs> cool. run different lengths. That's great. Then the 1600 one, the one that I ran. Um, the first person runs uh, an 800 meter, which is Tom Helms. Then the second person runs a 200 meter, which was Anthony Tramontosi. And a third person runs uh, another 200 meters, which was uh, sophomore David Tingley. And then the fourth person runs a 400, which was me. Wow. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> it was impressive. That's yeah, great. I was surprised. I had no idea that it was, we were even close to breaking the record. And then I, oh. after we ran it, I found out. I There's like, oh. nothing like hosting the relays and then yeah. both the boys and girls winning them. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> it was a great experience. It was cause great. It's great because um, last year in the winter we won it. Then subsequent years we've, we've won it every year. So it's, yeah. it feels good. <laughs> so... I want to point out I, that that project. I don't think we would have been able to do that at the old high school. That's probably true. I don't think I ever remember seeing anything like that coming out of the old high school. <laughs> not of that quality. No, not of that. <laughs> really? What are, you, what are your plans for next year? Uh, I'll be attending UMass Amherst. Oh, nice. Good luck. Thank Jerry? you, Jerry. Jerry and I are both UMass Amherst. Don't grads, let that so. discourage you. I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure you'll do better. I'm sure you'll do better. <laughs> Look where you end up. <laughs> Any other questions for Jensen? Okay, well, thanks a lot, and we'll yeah, see you at graduation. You. Thank you so much. Good luck. Next, we have uh, Mr. Bernard give us a quick update on the, someday we hope for the MSBA <laughs> SSBC update to no longer be on forward, the agenda. Looking forward to the, when item C1 is blank. <laughs> Mr. Bernard? I do have a few things of note uh, that I'd like to bring uh, the committee and the public up to speed on. Um, it is centered on, I think, two, what are two pretty significant outstanding issues um, <clears throat> that um, are being worked on. The first is a little update on the, um, the status of the work to um, complete the um, repairs to the drainage system. So I was informed late last week uh, by um, Gil Bain, specifically Joanna Cripp, that um, there was an anticipated completion date of May 19th, which is um, ahead of what had been the targeted date of June 2nd. So that is the latest information I have. I will tell you that my own, um, I'll say kind of layman's observations of the work that is going on around the campus um, has been uh, very positive. I think the Dow Company that's doing the work has done a very good job of working around um, the schedule of the schools and uh, accommodating um, the schools, particularly around the arrival and dismissal times. Um, and the, they, they appear to be um, you know, doing very, very good work. They've had, they've had double crews on um, to kind of expedite the completion. So I think that has, that has helped. Um, and you might also remember that <clears throat> pri uh, previously when the work on the drainage system was done in the fall, um, they were kind of wrapping up at the, around the student dismissal time at about 1.45. But this time, um, they are doing that still for about an hour, but then they're continuing um, starting up around 2.45, 3 o'clock for some di additional work later into the afternoon. So I think that, coupled with um, adding a second crew, has, has helped to push the timeline on, along a little bit. So again, right now, the um, latest and greatest information is that the completion date is scheduled for May 19th with a final inspection of those drain lines to take place approximately 30 days later, around, right around June 12th. The landscaping. So a couple of things to note here. Um, the, uh, there was a, a fertilizer applied at the, um, the lower site, kind of the surrounding areas to the new athletic fields. That was done uh, on May 10th. You might have noticed that there was some hydro seeding of some bare patches in that same area. That was done on uh, last Thursday, May 11th. And there has been a plan identifying uh, plantings at the lower site to be replaced. That was conducted last week. Um, the tree and shrub, shrub replacements to be identified, um, I've been told, and I quoted here in my report to you from Gilbane, that we, quote unquote, are on track for the 30th of May. I think I've previously informed you, and it's come up at SSBC meetings, that the plan was for landscaping issues to be resolved uh, by May 30th, and so I am told that that is still the plan. Um, and some uh, tree and shrub replacements were scheduled to take place 
this week. Um, I have asked, um, and it was Mr. Venezia and I had a conversation, and I think it was a good suggestion to enlist uh, one of our SSBC members, Steve Nathan, who is a, um, an arborist, to, um, to participate in kind of a walk of the site and, and to join in on a determination of what um, tr uh, trees and shrubs might be eligible for replacement. He has agreed to do that. Um, and that is supposed to take place at 2.30 this coming Wednesday. So I appreciate um, Steve's been an active member of the SSBC, and this is going a little bit above and beyond the call of duty, so to speak, but he was willing to do that. So my hope is, is that um, the plan that um, is identified for um, a pretty good number of trees and shrubs that need to be replaced will be kind of jointly agreed upon. Um, there is concern, I will tell you, kind of in the area of the central office, around some of those, I'm gonna call them like a pine shrub, the kind of a scrub pine, that have now been replaced two or three times, and I think there's a kind of a, a possibility they may suggest either an alternative planting for that, just they just don't seem to be taking into that. It's kind of like a small, a lower berm that abuts the, 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 the dead end road um, adjacent to the central office, so. Um, so that is what's taking place in terms of the landscaping plan. I don't know, I kind of asked for a little bit of an update from Gilbane at the SSBC meeting tomorrow night because I thought the committee would want to know that in full too. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll be able to provide that as well. Any questions or additional comments, Mr. Bernard? Just one comment. I, I just wanted to reassure everybody that when they see all these patches in the roadway coming up from Route 62 all the way oh, up yeah. through the back of the school, that the road for the most part will be repaved. And that's at all at the expense and at the cost of Gilbane, uh, not Correct. the school department. So. Just so everybody knows, that road will be replaced. It probably won't happen until probably, I think, late July or August, August. Because yeah. once they <clears throat> finish the drainage project, they want time for that patching to settle, and then they'll they'll go in uh, for the, the dirt that they put back in to settle, and then they'll go back right. and repave. So. Anything else? Yeah, good point. Yeah. Actually, before we get to our next agenda item, and <clears throat> I may have forgot this on purpose because of all the harassment he's already given me, but uh, I want to officially welcome Scott Buckley to the school committee. Won a hard fought yeah. election. and. and a couple weeks ago. So welcome, Scott. Look Thank forward you to your participation. Thank you. I have big shoes to fill. And Mr. Bowers is apparently going to watch over me. <laughs> <laughs> he's been glaring at you he's, since he's sat down. He's just he's looking right at me. Right. You, know. you haven't he's, even taken a vote yet. He's, he's ready to come in just in case. <laughs> he's on the sideline just in case we need a relief pitcher. Mr. Bowers is ready and able. Yeah, very good. <laughs> he's watching. <laughs> okay, next we have our annual presentation on the Special Education Parent Advisory Council. And tonight we have Steve McManus, the chair of the council and we also have accompanying him Cynthia Conant who is our director of pupil personnel services so Steve floor is yours maybe I'll just start and sure. just introduce you well Cynthia the floor is yours yeah. <laughs> good evening members of the school committee um, I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you some of the collaboration that has taken place between the special education parent advisory council and the pupil personnel department over the course of this year, I have had the continued pleasure of collaborating with Mr. Stephen McManus, our CPAC president. We have worked together to identify relevant topics and speakers for the parents and community of North Reading. As PPS director, I truly appreciate the opportunity to collaborate in this process. The feedback from these events is very important and helps guide the work that I do in my role in the district. So I'm very excited and looking forward to another year of positive collaboration coming up next year. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Steve McManus, our CPAC president. Thank you. Is this a... Uh... No, that's just for the cable set. Just, that's fine if it's right there. That's good. Okay. All right. Thank you. And um, thanks, Cynthia. And I also want to introduce uh, Vicki Labriola, who's our secretary. Uh, extraordinaire who's done a lot of work uh, throughout the year as well which I'll get into so uh, as Cynthia said my name is Steve McManus I'm the chair of the uh, CPAC I'm here to take here today to talk about who we are how we've been active in the past year and what our goals as a group are for next year so our duties uh, include but certainly are not limited to advising the district on matters that pertain to the education and safety of students with disabilities meeting regularly with school officials participating in the planning, development, and evaluation of the school district's special education programs, and last but not least, to advocate 
for the appropriate supports and special, special education services necessary to meet the individual needs of children with disabilities living in the district and to ensure that each child receives the individualized supports and special education services that the child is entitled to under applicable law. And students that fall into this category have been determined to have a disability which requires specialized instruction. Uh, so again, we've had a busy year, you know, and a goal of ours is to, in sort of building blocks and layers, add on additional programming that we uh, didn't do the year before. So we started off in October with our uh, basic rights and special education workshop. Um, and through the support of the PPS department um, and the, uh, the school district as a whole, we're again part of the MassPAC which is the statewide organization which provides information, training, and networking opportunity to uh, Massachusetts CPACs and the, the school districts and individuals that work with them. As part of this membership, the speaker that came out to give the basic rights and special education workshop was from the, the MassPAC, in this case, uh, which is represented by a statewide organization called the Federation for <coughs> Children with Special Needs. Uh, we've had the same speaker come out and give this presentation two or three times now. She's really, really good, very receptive to questions. And, uh, you know, within special education laws, rules, and regulations, there's a lot of legalese and, and lawyer talk. And she's a, a lawyer with special needs children of her own. So she can really address these questions and topics from a professional administrative level and, you know, personal level as well, which, which really means a lot to our group. Um, and through our website, which I'll get back to in a few minutes, we were contacted by a local attorney and financial planner, both of whom specialize in working with families of children with special needs. They volunteered their time to provide a workshop about financial and estate planning for children and families with special needs. This workshop took place in January and provided an introduction to information related to how to provide, um, how to maximize government benefits, create a long-term budget, and how to efficiently fund a special needs trust. And what we liked about this presentation is we had a lot of parents of uh, middle to high school kids who came out, whereas a lot of our other programming tends to draw uh, elementary school families. So it was nice to be able to put on a program that would engage a broader spectrum of um, not only special ed families, but as we always do, we, you know, our, our programs are open to anyone in the North Reading community and beyond. So we don't just limit ourselves to um, special education families. Our last speaker of the year was in March and um, was another speaker from the MassPAC. This workshop covered 504 plans, including eligibility criteria under federal law and the protections provided for students with disabilities, as well as key differences between an IEP and 504 plan. Um, so in addition to the programming that we've put on, we continue to be involved in other aspects of the community of North Reading as well. Uh, you know, the top soccer program, which we were involved with in its inception, gosh, four years ago now, uh, continues to grow. Top soccer is a community-based training and team placement program for young athletes with disabilities organized by Youth Soccer Association volunteers. The program has well over 30 participants and each of these players has a volunteer buddy to help them out, most of whom are North Reading High School students. The, the top soccer program has grown to include students from Lawrence, Reading, Andover, and other communities as well. This collaboration has worked out very well for all involved and we're looking forward to continuing to work with other members of the North Reading community to collaborate on this type of programming. Um, so in addition to those, those uh, items, there's been two major benchmarks that we've been able to add on uh, this year of programming that we've been able to do. Uh, the first was our website and thanks to our tireless Secretary Vicki and her husband Jason who volunteered immensely. Uh, the website is up and running. And what was really important about this uh, was that to build the website they looked to other towns that had really good benchmark websites to, um, to build up but they also, Vicki also posted a request looking for student volunteers for web de looking for web development experience from the Facebook North Reading Community Connection page. Uh, so Vicki worked with the high school to get the hours that the students worked um, to count as their community service, so which was absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much for, for coordinating that. Uh, the website contains external resources, information about the CPAC, uh, our contact info. Uh, so we've each separately gotten a lot of emails and phone calls from folks who found our um, information on the website. Uh, 
as well. And I'd like to read to you uh, an email that I got that I think really clarifies and uh, illuminates the type of uh, broader impact that we want to have as a CPAC as well. I got this from a Girl Scout leader in North Reading, and she wrote, my Girl Scout troop and myself want to say thank you for your page. Since the other mothers and I want to encourage the girls to be able to talk to somebody if they or someone they know needs help, we've decided to talk to them about mental health. While doing research, my troop found your resources to be so helpful while they are working very hard on their healthy living badges. Thank you very much. So that was really nice to get. Um, uh, in addition to the website, a new thing for us this year was that I was able to attend the uh, Federation for Children with Special Needs Visions of Community Conference. Uh, this conference was held in uh, early March in Boston and included more than 30 workshops on such topics as early childhood, transition to adulthood, special education, and mental health. Uh, I attended a few workshops, one that specifically fo focused on effective CPACs and how to generate parent involvement. Uh, and it was a great networking event, you know, just by lunch at, or just by good fortune at lunch, I was introducing myself to the people I sat next to, and it was the CPAC chair from Bill Ricca, Wilmington, and, you know, a couple other communities right around us. So we've stayed in touch. We let each other know about events that we're doing to work together, and, you know, anything that we put on here is, uh, if somebody's from Bill Ricca or Wilmington, they're more than, more than welcome to come. So we really collaborate and, and work together on, on these things. Um, and my attendance at this conference was paid for by the MassPAC membership that I, I mentioned earlier as well. Uh, so kind of moving on to next year, our goals for next year are to increase the frequency of our business meetings. We had one business meeting in March. Uh, we'd like to step that up to at least once a quarter. Um, and uh, also to hold board elections. You know, the current board, uh, myself, Vicki, and Pam McIntyre, our vice chair, has been in place for four years. And it's important to build involvement from others who, uh, who might be interested. We tried this at March at our business meeting, and we had good attendance at our business meeting, but nobody who felt like volunteering to. <laughs> You're doing too good a job, Steve. Exactly. Yeah, well, <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But uh, so it's certainly been an honor to work as the chair of the CPAC. And you know, if we end up holding elections in the fall, and uh, there's more parents that want to get involved and, and take our spots, that's fantastic. But if not, then you're stuck with Vicki and I for another year. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But it's, it's certainly been a pleasure and an honor to work with this group and with, with, uh, with Vicki and Cynthia and John. And we'll see how the, uh, the elections go for next year. You know, kind of highlight in closing, one of the things sometimes, the, the, you know, the, the stuff that doesn't happen is just as important as the stuff that does. You know, through the website, we get a lot of solicitations for speakers and, and volunteers wanting to come hold this event, it'll be free, and, and I work really closely with, uh, with Cynthia and John and, and their staffs about, hey, I got this note, I think this could or could not be interesting, what do you guys think? And there's been a couple things that we were kind of on the fence on and, and didn't, uh, didn't end up sponsoring, so I think, you know, in addition to the events that we hold, it's, we're really on the same page with the type of programming that we want to be sponsoring and involved with, uh, with the schools. So we feel really good about that, that we're working so closely, have a good positive relationship, and, and we're on the same page with where we, where we want to see this thing go. Uh, so certainly, last but not least, I'd like to thank uh, John and his entire staff for their support. Uh, I also attend the monthly meetings of his uh, Parent Advisory Council, and his, he, John and his staff have been nothing but supportive of the CPAC. And in addition, I'm very happy to say we have a collaborative and positive relationship with uh, Cynthia and the rest of her staff in the PPS office, and we'd like to personally thank you for your support and, and guidance, so thank you. Any questions or comments for Steve, Cynthia? Yeah. Well, I, I just want to thank you, Steve, for your work. I, mean, I, I actually went to the meeting in January on the financial and uh, state planning, and so I thought that was really useful. In fact, one of the guys keeps following up with me and I keep avoiding him, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, that kind of goes do, with I the I do turf. always yeah. back if he's actually watching, but. Um, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, sure, I think sure it's. He's watching. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's very useful, and you know, and it's it's good, it's good that parents do find the time, and Vicky as well. I mean, too many groups don't have parents that want to get involved, and with a special needs child of my own, I mean, I know how much time it can take to volunteer, and so I just want to thank you for the work that you do. Well, thank you. It's a it's a pleasure to work with the district.
Derek? Yeah, I'd echo the same thing, Steve. I think I thought it was more than four years that you were doing this, but uh, you've done a great job. And I was going to comment also on the estate planning. Is that something that had come up before amongst the group, or was this something the first time you you had somebody in to do the estate planning type of seminar? That was the first time it's come up. I mean, it's always kind of a discussion amongst parents yeah. about, you know, geez, how are we going to handle yeah. this now and in the future? Yeah. Uh, well, so it was nice to have somebody from North Reading. Good. The, the finance planner is from North Reading and the lawyer was from Andover. Uh, so, you know, I thought. Good. It sounds like a worthwhile really thing to at least get out there yeah. and present. So. It is. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, we want to address the, the IEPs and the rules and regulations, but we also want to pay attention to the needs. I don't know if beyond school is right. the right phrase, but the other needs that uh, special ed parents are, and families are, are going through. Good. So I Again. thought that was a good one. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to say I, you're, you're a tremendous spokesperson and a great advocate for the group. And I think you've been, you know, as I thought it was more than four years, but it's a pleasure to always have you in here. Um, you're clear, you're concise, you give us all the information we need. You ought to run for school committee. But um, <laughs> <coughs> that's wait, next. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> that, but, but I really appreciate the, the time and effort that you and Vicki and the rest of the group put into this. Um, and, and as Jerry, as Jerry uh, said also, I think the whole thing with dealing with real life issues in addition to school issues is extremely important. And I think any help parents can get um, is, is great. So I appreciate what you're doing for the community. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. But I, I just, I, I too want to echo um, what the committee has said. And Steve, thank you thanked us, but I want to thank you. Um, and I don't work as closely with Mrs. Labriola, but I, I do tend to work more closely with you. And while Cynthia is your initial point of contact, I do enjoy and appreciate very much the, kind of the positive advocacy that, um, that you present and, and the working relationship that we have. Your, your work not only on the CPAC, but on the Parent Advisory Council that I host um, is very valuable. And I hope you'll continue, uh, in, in, certainly in the leadership role, but if not, in some capacity in CPAC when those elections do take place. Because I think you have really done uh, a very good uh, and, and positive uh, amount of work that has benefited children of this district. And that's really what the role has been designed to be. And I think you've carried it out very well. So thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next we'll move on to, we have the superintendent's yeah. goals. These are his educator goals for his two-year evaluation cycle, Thank beginning you, May Chairman. 2017, running through April 2019. That is correct. Um, so I thought I would just take a moment to, to walk you through what, um, what I've proposed for um, goals for my educator plan um, following my most recent evaluation. So what I've done here is um, I've identified, I'm not going to walk read through this entire document, so please don't get nervous, but if you have questions, I'm certainly willing to answer them. But I thought um, I would follow up with, um, in my professional practice goal, to continue to, um, to, to work to build the highest level of effective strategic leadership for the district. Um, it certainly is not something that I can do in isolation. It takes a lot of other people working with me, but my hope is that um, those efforts will continue and that the relationships that are built among um, the staff, um, particularly my leadership team, and um, working with the school committee, that we will continue to, to bear positive um, results. So when I'm, when I'm speaking here tonight, I'm, I'm going to be kind of working off of what's in yellow on the document that you have, um, if that helps you to, to kind of follow okay. along. Um, for the student learning goal, I'm looking to um, to work, continue to work with principals to um, elevate the, the level of performance of students um, to, to at least uh, approach or meet the student growth targets for the high need and uh, all student subgroups um, over the next two years based on um, standardized test results. And then I have a series of um, district improvement goals, more than I've had in the past. Um, it's usually advised, uh, advised that we have two, um, as superintendents, we have two district goals, but I have some that don't really, in my estimation, fulfill the, kind of the duration of the plan. So because of that, I've, I've, I've added a few more. Um, so um, I'll get to a couple of examples of what, that, what I mean with that in just a moment. Um, I think it's important that we keep our, our strategic plan as a district and our PS 2021 on the front burner. So I'm suggesting that, um, that I will continue to work to um, to enact that plan, um, we would be entering year two um, in the 2017-18 school year, year two of the five-year plan. 
Um, the next uh, goal on, on page four, um, district improvement goal number two under school safety and security, <clears throat> is an example where um, I don't believe that this is necessarily something that would take the, the full duration of the, of the goals plan, but um, I'm, I've been doing some work um, with uh, the assistant principals at both the middle school and the high school, as well as representatives of the police and fire department, and we have been conducting kind of an initial review of our existing um, emergency protocols, and these run the gamut from responding to all kinds of natural disasters that might occur, weather-related, for example, um, as well as breaches in security. So what I'm hoping and targeting is that sometime late in the winter, late 2017, early 2018, is that I would be soliciting for feedback a draft of what is a, going to end up be a, being a pretty um, pretty extensive overhaul of our existing emergency operations plans, due in large part to um, now that we're in a shared middle high school, there was a need to, um, to update those in terms of evacuation plans and such, um, now that the, that the building has taken on a, a new shape, as well as updating um, based on some, some data we've collected and also some, some needs that we felt weren't being addressed in our um, existing um, protocols. So this kind of follows along with some of the work we've done to responding to uh, emergency situations, um, things like we've talked about publicly, the ALICE protocols, and we've done some drills with that. And also, you know, I can assure you of some internal um, um, advancements that we've made that I'm really not in a position to speak publicly about uh, because of the nature of what they represent. But I think we are have, have made some good strides over the last couple of years in terms of uh, making sure that our schools are safe and, and that our learning environments are appropriate. A third um, district improvement goal is under family and community engagement. So I'm, I'm very, I'm increasingly interested about the uses of social media and how we can um, incorporate those into advancing the school district. I'm, I'm very specifically, I'm looking at um, a phone app um, that we would have a district app that you could have on your smartphone that would be kind of an easy access to information. Um, I've had some very preliminary conversations with, um, with Dr. Downs and also with our digital learning team, our students at the high school that are, are so, <laughs> so informed and so skilled at, at, at working to um, you know, kind of bring uh, social media and, 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 and other technologies as a, a means of communication. So <coughs> I, I intend to elicit, elicit their um, um, feedback and, and their participation in, um, in, in, in advancing our social media and other technologies as, as communication tools uh, for the district. You might recall that the website overhauls that we undertook over the last 18 months or so, um, you know, I think was a step in a good direction. We have our Twitter accounts, um, but I'm looking, you know, I, I think there's more technology out there that I'd like to try and, and bring to the district as well. Um, the next is, you know, again, kind of capitalizing what I think has been some good work around digital learning. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think it's important that um, as a superintendent that I be, you know, kind of integrally involved in, um, in, in incorporating digital technology in the district. So I'm looking to um, kind of build my own capacity, but also to bring initiatives to the district. We're, we're going to be announcing very soon. Um, probably tomorrow, uh, an informational meeting, try to elicit some parent participation in, in a, um, a first robotics program um, at the middle school and the high school. Um, that meeting, I think, is going to be held on May 31st. But I, I think it's, it's, you know, I think the, the era of robotics is emerging very quickly. We have a pretty robust program at our middle school that we're looking to bring to the high school through a course, that Robotics Academy that you might remember we, uh, we brought to you to um, accept in the wintertime. Um, and I think this is just kind of going to be kind of an extension of that. So I think digital learning is, is definitely uh, something that's, that's important and <clears throat> we're looking to, uh, to advance. <coughs> Social emotional learning, I, I've spoken, you know, very pointedly in the past about some initiatives that we've undertaken, um, social emotional task force, book studies and such. Um, we've introduced a new uh, program at the high school, the bridge program to serve students. And I think that there's a lot going on and I think there's a significant need for addressing the social emotional um, needs of students. So uh, I've set for a goal for myself um, as a district improvement goal to expand um, our social emotional learning activities that would address um, the, the needs for students. And then lastly, um, I'm kind of excited about, I'm excited about all of these goals. I'm really excited about this one. Now that I've got, you know, a few years under my belt as the superintendent, I'm looking to um, to further engage the community both in um, the, the access to this building, the middle high school, and also to um, expand um, kind of the information that we share uh, for parents. So I, I've kind of identified, and this is not 
quite honestly, something that is um, that I've come up with as a kind of I mean, my own creation. Things like Parent University exist in other communities, but I'm looking to to work to kind of bring uh, something of that of that ilk to North Reading. It you know, obviously would have nuances to it because of what our community represents and what interests there might be. But essentially what I'm looking to do over the course of the next several months is to bring um, this concept of parent university, kind of a, a day or half day set of workshops on a Saturday next spring, spring of 2018, and, and bring um, our own staff in, potentially a keynote speaker and um, other guest speakers to, to talk about things that might be of, of importance to parents and, and members of the community and use our school um, as the vehicle to kind of you know, host that and I think thereby you know, expand the buy-in that the community has, that parents have um, in support of the school district by, by giving something back to them by the, by the way of information. So um, I'm hoping to get going on that quite honestly before um, the summer break so that I can just kind of form a working group with me um, you know, I have ideas for engaging the business community as sponsors for it. Um, I've seen things like this in, in Wilmington, excuse me, in uh, Wakefield uh, and Bill Ricca. And I think that there's, in Reading, and I think there's value um, for North Reading. So I'm going to be looking to, to introduce kind of almost, if you would, would, you know, kind of a day of workshops, informational workshops for parents and, and members of the community. So I think with that, there are six um, in total district goals, district improvement goals a student learning goal and a professional practice goal and these are my uh, my goals for myself so to speak um, in the coming cycle any questions or comments for mr. Bernard <coughs> Scott I, oh. a couple so um, parent university <coughs> parent explain university. a little bit on, on what type of workshops is it like preparing them to like for the next stage for college is it just for to help them with you know the day-to-day -day life with mm -hmm. their children I mean what's the what are the types of workshops? I, I think the answer to your question is yes, okay. but now let me because I think it could, it's open ended right now. It's you know very much in the infancy stage. But I what I envision is you know subject areas like educating the whole child. You know, so might there be a social emotional workshop? You know, the parents who are interested in learning more about what that is, or maybe are confronted with some personal challenges and they want to know more about it, they could attend that workshop. So I envision choices of workshops. There could be a session A, session B. But there might be four workshops offered at those slots, and parents or community members would pick the one that was of most interest to them. I think that we, you know, another idea I have, and again, these are, you know, just kind of things that are swirling around here, is um, I think we do a very good job with um, the Naviance Family Connection Program for our high school students, but I'm not so sure how much parents are plugged into what that workshop can be. So I think that there, it would be a nice idea to kind of have a, a workshop for parents to come in and see what is your student introduced in the freshman year to their portal, you know, what does it look like for them and how can you use this as a parent, you know, as a student kind of progresses through high school and starts to look for the college search. Um, I, you know, there could be curricular issues, curriculum, technology, educating the whole child. So I think everything is kind of a possibility right now. I think it's going to be, you know, what's the availability of people to offer a workshop um, and how do we, you know, how do we make that happen? Um, and I also think the idea of a keynote speaker is something I'm very interested in. So maybe we start the day with, like an hour keynote speaker, and then from there people branch out to a, a couple or three workshops that they choose from um, and see where it goes. Um, so I, I think, you know, the, the, answer, the quick answer is yes, because I think everything is a possibility right now. It's just going to be about, you know, do we have the availability of staff that want to do that or people that, that can present? You know, there's obviously, this is not an item that has a budget, um, so I would be <coughs> relying on sponsorships. Um, I will tell you that since coming up with this kind of concept, or at least wanting to bring it to North Reading. I have had a conversation with um, with Amy Luckowitz, the Youth Services Director. Oh, and I think, did, I was, was there. it talked about? I was on, there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there, there's money through the grant, the Drug Free Communities grant, um, that could be used to support an idea like this. Again, it's community outreach. So, um, you know, there is going to be a need for us to to partner up with some people to, to, to bring some needed funds to do this because it would it would be outside of what um, what we have available to us through the budget. Julie? Comment on that. I think any sort of insight that you can give parents regarding curriculum would be greatly appreciated. Yeah. I know when Patrick ran the math nights, yeah. it was very well attended. Right. And I don't know if it was just because we were piloting the math programs and there were so many differing opinions happening. But, um, you know, I hear it in my work the new math, I don't get it. Yeah. And I think, you know, you can send parent letter homes that are part of a math program, but, 
you know, really having that hands-on, you know, this is what's happening, this is why we're doing it, mm -hmm. this is how you can help your child would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, no, I think, there's, I think there's a place for that because I think you're right. I think those, I think people really got a lot out of those math information nights. Um, but I do, I think, I, think, I think that's an area where curriculum, technology, social emotional learning, those are kind of, I think, three, you know, they're big umbrellas, they encompass a lot, but I do think there's a place for something like that in a concept like what we're talking about, so. One of the things that I would add on curriculum is, is um, this, this probably is still true. I know that our high school requirements are a lot, are more difficult than many other high schools. We require the four years of- Correct. And, and I think that, that would be another area in the curriculum to explain to parents what we, require, what we require in high school and why, at least in my opinion, that prepares our students and gives them maybe a little bit of a competitive yeah. advantage against students from other high schools. I know our, our, our requirements are pretty stringent. At the very, high very, <clears throat> it's, it's a bit untypical that a high school has a, a four-year requirement for all four major Correct. subjects. Yeah. You'll usually see the science requirement back off right. after the junior. And, and interestingly enough, that's probably our most robust area at the high school of science. We have students taking five, six, seven science classes in their, in their four-year career. So it's interesting, that, but you're right. I think to have a four-year requirement in English, math, science, and social studies is, is not the norm. I had to take one science class five or six times just to pass it, but that was a different, that was a different issue. Yeah. That's why you end up here. You're stealing exactly. Jerry's lines. <laughs> Jer Jerry, I think only Jerry only took four years, I think. So it's very, it's very conceptual right now. It's big picture. You know, I even hesitated to set it as a goal because I think it's a bit lofty, but in the end, I really think that I think the more we can have people in, um, attuned and informed about what's going on, I think there's a greater buy-in that we have to support us as a district and the work that we want to do. So, you know, again, like a lot of these goals, it's not going to be just my, um, my work. It's going to be me bringing people together to help, help the end product. But I think there's a lot of potential um, for opening up the school, like I said, on a Saturday, you know, 8 to 1 or something like that, you know, and just trying to get people in here and learn more about what's going on in their child's education and having the opportunity to ask questions that they might not typically otherwise have a, you know, an opportunity I, to do, so. I think the app's a great idea. I think, you know, again, like with Parent University, you have to figure out what exactly we do, do we want in the app because yeah. you can't have everything. And then there also has to be support for the app. Just for an example, if there's, you know, one of the app uh, functions is you can get scores of the, you know, of the athletic teams, then someone has Someone's to be maintaining that, maintaining yeah, it and right, entering exactly. the scores. Right. Or, you know, no school announcements will still go out and email on the phone, but you're gonna want those on the app also. Right. Someone logs on the right. app, the right. first thing they see is no school today. I, I know other schools, Haverhill High School I know has an app now. Uh, Danvers has one. Oh, do they? And I think, you know, if you can get something on your phone that gives you all mm -hmm. the information you need, or, or a good chunk of the information yeah, you need. Yeah. I, th I think it's a great idea. And I know there could be a cost to it because I don't think we can, I don't know if we can develop it internally, but maybe we do have the Yeah, I think, I think, I think we have potential for minimizing the cost at least, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I think too many apps. the activities, too many appetites. like I would love as a parent to open up the app and say, what's going on this afternoon? Yeah, exactly. Willow, right. do you want to go to the girls' softball game? Right, exactly. I find it very difficult to You have to go through like two or three yeah, steps. Yeah, you have to go to different to places, like right. I have I, I agree. print out from the transcript, paste it up, you know. And that, that changes. And it changes. So, so like today the, game, today the game was canceled. So if right. you have the app, then you see, oh, the softball game's canceled today. And so again, calendar, calendar at a glance. But not just yeah. sports things. Right. Oh, I understand. You know, yeah. I, I concert tonight. It was a concert. I didn't know that there was the notorious concert. Yeah. I possibly could have come. You know, so I, I just feel that we still need to kind of get that information out there. Yeah, it's it would be nice to not have to go through the steps to get it, yes. which is what I f right. I find particularly around the athletics with right. the um, you go to the Cal the Cal school. Cal yeah, school exactly. Website. That is not helpful. No. You, go through, you have to go through like three no. steps. Yeah. It's, it used to be easier. They've made it right. complicated. Yeah. So I don't. In an attempt to make it easier, I think they actually yeah they made it, it up difficult. a little bit. Yeah. The only thing I want <clears throat> Mel, I wanted to comment on is uh, John. I'm glad to see that you have that. So review of the safety protocols, yes. emergency operations. I think that's an area where we cannot get uh, complacent or lethargic. I think totally we have to stay agree. on top of that because we could go, God willing, 50 years without something happening. Mm -hmm. But if we need these things in place and we need mm -hmm. people to be familiar with them. So I think it's really, really important. Thank you. No, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, I think, I hope you all feel like 
that's something that we've taken on, I think, the last couple well, of years with a number of initiatives. And this is, this is just one more. And I have to say, you know, we have a very good, um, a very good working group on this. Mike Maloney, Mike Downs, the two assistant principals, our police chief, our fire chief, and our school resource, resource officer all participate in the meetings. And we have the two, both chiefs there, sometimes the deputy chief for the fire department as well, Barry Galvin. So there's, I mean, I think they have, you know, could, I could not be ask, asking for more in terms of that, that partnership. And, and incidentally, I will tell you, um, and it's okay, I will be sending out a Blackboard Connect, but we are going to be doing a kind of a, a emergency uh, drill, a practice drill on the, um, on the May 26th early release day because we want to do it without the students there because we want to test our own protocols um, first. But um, we have conducted um, ALICE drills, as you all know, in the past, but we will be, um, we will be doing something on May 26th. So it's- Like an ALICE drill? Uh, it, it's going to be a kind of a more comprehensive, yeah, all of kind of our internal okay. procedures rooted in technology. Um, but I will be notifying. I have a planning meeting actually on May 23rd, I think a week from tomorrow. Um, but I plan to notify parents. We, we will notify um, folks what's going on. Um, similarly, just again for the public's um, kind of information, you know what, I'll hold, I'll hold, I'll hold until the next meeting, yeah. And I, I just want to add even a simple thing, which we spent a lot of time discussing, um, the situation with the, the doors and coming into the high school yes. and middle school during the day. That situation mm -hmm. is much better now. Um, those doors are, are locked, they're secure, and you have to come around the front you to do. get in. And people I have gotten used to it. Right, and people got used to it. And they did, yeah. I'm really happy that that's yeah. the case now, and, and, and it, everybody kind of gets to know the system. And, and for the most part, you can park out front. Right, you can park out front. You can. Spaces right. along you can. the, yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I would expect that in the wintertime, I'll have a draft for people to look at, and then we'll be ready to roll that out, you know, February-ish of 2018. Does, and I want to make sure we do. We have existing protocols in place that right. we follow. Should we need them, we're just we're just updating. Well, it's just, I mean, with the new Alice program, like, does it Correct. contradict right. what we, some of the, you know, know, do you put the green light, Correct. You know, the green card, and yes. you know, those sorts yep. of things. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly, that's right. a good example, exactly, of right. what we're trying to, trying else? to avoid now. Right. Uh, the only, other, only other comment on the <laughs> on parent university, but on other topics, just you, you were talking about possibly curriculum on different areas. I would also think if you can think about different levels of school, too, mm -hmm. like something specific sure, elementary, elementary versus yeah, yeah. high school, yep. you, you know. Of course. You know, just because to try to make it inclusive to the entire district. Exactly. No, nope, I get it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay, moving on. We have uh, the regular. We have the minutes for the regular meeting, open session of the school committee on April 10th. And I have a motion to approve. I can say I read through them and they seemed perfect to me, but I can't make the motion. Motion to approve open session, regular meeting minutes of the school committee from April 10th, 2017. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Oh, actually, Scott, you probably um, should abstain since you weren't a member of the committee. Yeah. I was <laughs> so here at both meetings. Scott, Scott, ab okay. Scott abstains. So abstain. four in favor, one abstention. But I didn't make the motion. I, was, <laughs> no. I read them. <laughs> Next up, uh, under budget updates, we have a, a report yeah. um, on the. Wait, do we have another? We got, another, yeah, we have we got another minutes with oh, the 24th. April, April 24th, no. Look at that, I'm already Although I do up. appreciate your expeditious manner yeah. moving forward. <laughs> I can make a motion that we oh, approve yeah. the regular meeting of the school committee, open session, budget workshop, minutes from April 24th, 2017. Is there a second? Yes. A second, I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And two I'll abstains. Again. <laughs> I was not there, and Scott Ooh, was not on the cool. committee. So it's three in favor, two abstentions. <laughs> I'm not approving things you people said when I wasn't there. I, I was there. I mean, I'm well, you were there, yeah, but you weren't, you weren't officially there. <laughs> okay, next we have a, a report on the uh, request for proposal we put yes. out regarding custodial services, and I'll turn this over to <clears throat> Michael. Great, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. So. Uh, in your packet this evening, the, there was a memo that kind of detailed what the administration's recommendation was 
Um, as you may know, we did um, recently pursue um, a custodial uh, cleaning uh, services proposals. Uh, we submitted an RFP, and those proposals were due on, back on May 1st, uh, 2017. Um, so at this point, uh, we have thoroughly reviewed uh, both the non-pricing portion of the proposals that detailed uh, the, the service and the experience and, the, and so forth of the, the various uh, you know, bidders, as well as the, the pricing proposals as well. Uh, we had five uh, you know, vendors that um, responded to the request for proposals. And um, you know, at this point, I think it's fair to say the administration um, is prepared to recommend that we you know, do not pursue um, the privatized contract at this time. As you may recall, during the budget process, this option was pursued to investigate whether or not a significant you know, operational cost savings would exist by sort of restructuring and, and pursuing a, a privatized contract during the, the second shift. Uh, and uh, that did not exist, so we, we opened the pricing proposals. Um, about a, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, and you know, did some thorough analysis. And it's, it's fair to say that there's, there really is not a significant cost savings to, to changing gears um, so, you know, in, in, this, in this fashion. Um, we do feel it was a worthwhile exercise. Um, we've certainly, I think in recent weeks, have opened up the, the conversations and the dialogue with the union leadership, you know, certainly on this topic, and mm -hmm. as well as um, you know, how we can continue to look at our, our in-house operation and, um, you know, look for areas of efficiency and, and you know, continue to produce, you know, work of, of high quality. And I think everyone was committed to that, um, uh, certainly the administration and the, and the custodial union that we've uh, been meeting with. So I think that those, those conversations were happening and I think that will continue to happen. And I think certainly this exercise that we go through, I know it was certainly a challenging um, and something that we didn't, you know, pursue certainly easily, but we felt we certainly learned a lot, and I think it's fair to say that, although it didn't yield the, the savings um, that we, you know, weren't sure of when we submitted the proposals, um, you know, there were certainly some, you know, some quality proposals that were received in terms of the experience, and we certainly learned a lot by, by reading through those, and, um, but I think it's, I think we're certainly committed, and I think the, the value of having school employees continue to, to care for the, the needs of the buildings, the needs of the students, the needs of the staff and the community uh, certainly, uh, you know, far outweighs any potential, you know, operational savings. And then that was clear by, by reviewing the proposals, both, the, you know, the, the non-pricing and the pricing proposals. Comments? Um, it seems conspicuous by its absence that you're not sharing with us any of the numbers that you got back on these proposals yeah. um we, uh, no we're prepared to do yeah. that I, i'm just yeah. curious i'm not looking to extend the meeting or anything yeah. but i find sure, it no. interesting that do um that. that but i i accept your conclusion that it <coughs> doesn't appear to be yeah. worthwhile at this point in time um right I, i'm going to say the same thing i said before i hope that the custodians and i hope all of our faculty and staff understand that with the budget constraints that we're facing every single year now we're going to have to start doing these types of things you know we're not here um to provide jobs to people, we're here to, provide, to, to educate children. Mm -hmm. And I think um, sometimes I, I, I think that, again, we deal with the budget and it's almost like we're not sharing those mm -hmm. budget constraints and concerns with our faculty and staff. They have to understand mm -hmm. that something has yeah. to give here sooner or later, um, that we can't continue to, to basically, um, you know, maintain the current staffing we have um, if, we, if we don't, begin to negotiate with some of the unions some types of savings someplace along the line. So I think this is a worthwhile exercise. I really do. And I give you credit for doing it. I don't think anybody should be apologizing for it. Um, I think yeah. these are the types of things we're going to have to start doing in the future. Right. But I yeah. hope everybody understands the difficulties we're having with, with budget. I, I will say, I, I think for the custodian, and I appreciate you saying that, Jerry, and I, and I, I agree with you. I think that I think we, we, we pride ourselves on the culture that we we build here in the district and i think that the the custodians to their credit were i think you know while i can understand and i fully appreciate the level of anxiety that such a proposal might have have caused them um i will say that i think both in the in the union leadership and also about an hour and a half meeting i held with the entire group 
during the April school vacation were very, I think, understanding of the position that we had taken and why we were doing it. Um, and I think they, 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 they understood that. Yes. You know, in the end, and I, you know, I think when we, when we did the final analysis, I think you could, you could say that the savings was in the area of $60,000 that it would have netted. Um, and we just felt, and I still feel today, that the value of having our own people in our schools, familiar with our staff, familiar with our students, caring for the buildings to the, to the degree to which they do, um, far outweighed that. You know, I really went into it not having any idea. Uh, Michael had, had experience with doing something similar in a different district. I never had. I really had no idea you know, what, it would, what it would result in. But I think as a, as a procedural step, it was necessary given where we were um, and where we might be again. <laughs> you know, I think we needed to take a, uh, make a hard decision to say, um, you know, we needed to look everywhere to see if we could net any kind of a yeah. substantive savings. So. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I think upon analysis, <clears throat> I think when we looked at what we identified as the most kind of advantageous proposal, meaning the, the company and the vendor when we went mm. through all of the, the, the various criteria, service, experience, you know, experience working in school districts, similar size and scope of what we were looking for, um, that we identified, when you look at the savings kind of on paper between the analysis of, of the second shift costs, in-house costs compared to what the, the privatized contract would be, it was in the range of the $65,000 you know, that Mr. Bernard just referenced. But you know, I think it's fair to say that you know, there's, there was some other costs that you know, potentially would reduce that amount when yeah. we looked at potential increase of, of overtime related costs to to cover the, the various events across the district that go on at the elementary schools, the middle school, and the high school, to to ensure that those events would have an in-house employee right. we um, have, covering we'd those. We have to pay more for that, correct? Those are all we just, feel we right. could. There would be potentially a need for savings. for an, an increased custodial overtime costs. Um, <coughs> you know, certainly snow removal costs was in question. You know, given the timing of storms, would you have you know certainly less in-house staff to have some you know flexibility with? So. Uh, there was a lot of you know, analysis that went into it, and um, you know I think they would. It's fair to say there would have been you know potentially some savings on the town side in terms of some benefits, but you know coupled with some in increased you know unemployment costs and uh, estimates, you know that would have been uh, certainly would have been would have been uh, you know mitigated that certainly in the first year of, of making this type of a change. So. Um, I think it's fair to say if you know this, there was some pretty thorough analysis. If anybody wants more information, you know, I can certainly share that with you um, of the analysis that was done in terms of the, the cost benefit analysis. But you know, I think it's fair to say it, it was a certainly were a worthwhile exercise. I think so. We learned a lot. We opened up that dialogue of how we can, you know, look at things a little bit differently um, mm -hmm. with our in-house staff that we do have. How we can continue to, you know. It, you know, enhanced services, you know, where it needs to, needs to be in, in areas and um, potentially, you know, at, you know, lead to savings as well uh, by, by looking at it, so. I guess the point I'm trying to make is this committee and the administration spends four months banging ahead against the wall trying to formulate a, a level services budget. And I hope that the, our employees, all of our employees, I'm not just talking about the custodians, appreciate yeah. the fact that we're just barely trying to get by year to year here and that, uh, that you know that they take into consideration our budget constraints when we're when we're working with them. That's all. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Scott, uh, just two quick things. I mean, and you don't have to do it here if you don't want to, Mike. But um, um, just the sixty-five thousand dollars savings off of what was the base w w that you were kind of off of what? Off of the base value, yes, I do have that. So we were we were basing it off an amount of four hundred ninety-five thousand. Four hundred ninety-five thousand. In terms of when we looked at. Um, you know the in-house staff that we would have, and that's how we were comparing uh, the pricing proposals that we received. And how many how many bids were received? Or so we received five proposals, uh, one of which we actually was in incomplete. So there was really four that met the minimum qualifications <coughs> and criteria that we were evaluating from. Um, but I think it's fair to say, I mean, they were they were certainly it was a competitive process. Um, the, you know, many of the, the, the bidders took a lot of time to learn about the district, and we did a walkthrough, and I think it was, you know, we definitely received competitive bids as a result. Uh, thank you. Anything else? I just want to say I echo Jerry's uh, comments. I think we have to look everywhere we can for potential savings. Um, 
as long as they don't impact what we're doing in the district or negatively, you know, cause any kind of negative harm to the buildings or anything else in the district. I think we have to continue to search for cost savings. So I, I appreciate the effort that was made and I agree with the conclusion. It's not only the money, it's also sometimes um, the quality of work and true. You know, there's been mixed results in other districts when they've when they've outsourced even half of the custodial services mm -hmm. at night. So I support the I support the conclusion. Thank you. All right next, uh, there's nothing on staffing, John. Nothing on staffing tonight. No. Uh, I did. There was one other budget update item. Oh, okay. About the seam seam collaborative. Oh, okay. Budget. All right. Yeah. Okay. I, I just I I actually wanted to point out on that budget. Um, you know, Jerry's just talking about. I was looking at the seam uh, FY18 approved budget, and uh, they have a 6.23 percent increase mm -hmm. for their mm -hmm. um, budget. I think mm -hmm. we're under. What did we come up with? 3.8. Uh, 3.8 percent. Yeah. yeah, but for for North Reading though, it's about three and a half percent. I think. No, but I'm just I'm just saying seam overall, overall is a 6.2 yeah. percent oh, budget increase. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, yeah, that'd increase. be wonderful. Anyway, so I think, Mr. Chairman, just you know. North Reading is one of 10 member districts at the SEAM Collaborative, and I serve as the district's representative. I'm probably going to be doing something similar with you soon for the North Shore Education Consortium, of which we are also a member district. I mean, that is in terms of presenting a budget um, that's been adopted by the Collaborative. Um, this is a statutory requirement, um, so I'm, I'm providing you with the budget. There's no action needed tonight. Um, it's more just to, to provide you with the information um, as required. And I think in the past, my recollection is, I think the two things that, that the committee has found to be um, of most interest is um, by what's, what's, our, what's our fee for joining, and it's actually very small, it's $5,500. Um, so for North Reading, and not every community can be a member district. Um, there, like I said, there are 10 that are members of the, um, of the SEAM Collaborative. Um, so it's a $5,500 so-called membership fee, and then I think for our, for our purposes tonight, I thought it was important to call to your attention that um, the, the, the offset or kind of the, the, the savings that we realize um, by having students attend um, the SEAM Collaborative is in the area of about $85,000 given our present enrollment there. So it, it is definitely a, you know, a prudent decision. Um, not only for, from, a, from a fiscal standpoint, but I think also because it is, it is a school that <clears throat> allows <coughs> districts, North Reading, to, um, to provide a quality educational experience for a student that we might, <coughs> with, that we cannot provide um, in district. So um, I think, it, again, there's no action needed tonight. I, I thought, you know, it, again, I think that in the past, my recollection is the committee was was most interested in was what you know beyond the educational value what's the financial value and I think you know that's kind of the point I wanted to raise with you for tonight so actually the budget's gone up 6.43 percent not 6.43 over yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just one. And we do house a program. I don't know if you're all aware of that. We do house a, a deaf and hard of hearing program right. um, at, at the Hood School, right. mm -hmm. for which we receive a uh, rental fee from the same collaborative to, to, to take those two classrooms. I think I know the answer to this question, but just for clarification, the reason we belong to the two different collaboratives is just what services they can offer. Pro programs, exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Right. My only question, not about the budget per se, but SEAM in, in general, but yes. <clears throat> I know that a, I, I have had a couple conversations with uh, Mrs. Conant about um, special education costs. And I know that about half of the students that are out of district go to collaboratives and the other half don't <clears throat> because they just can't meet the needs of the children. Are there, I, I would love to hear maybe not today, but something from the collaboratives on any new programs they're developing, if, they, if they're working on new programming to possibly be able to you know, take more students so they don't need yeah. uh, private placements outside of that. And again, that doesn't have to be today, but mm -hmm. I would just be curious about that because I know the collaborative is usually where they try to go first if they can meet the needs. And so I'm just wondering if, if SEAM or any of the other collaboratives are working to, you know, increase the services offered. Yeah. yeah, it's a fair question. I think my experience now having sat on both boards for three years, the North Shore Consortium, I would say the one that's probably Unfortunately, budding uh, there is to, um, is this, I'm talking about in a big picture, not necessarily North Reading Connected, is um, for students with, with addiction issues. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's been that's been a, 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 an initiative that un unfortunately has seen a greater interest. Um, and again, I'm talking about that in a broad yeah. broad way. But I think that it's fair to say um, that issues arise that you know pro they're very interested in accommodating districts because they know individual districts can't assume the responsibility on their own um, for the cost of, of a specialized program. So I think that line of thinking is. Is ever present, but yeah, as things come up, I'll certainly let you know. In fact, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the collaboratives in my administrative report, and that's probably a place where I could address something like that when it comes up. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we have bids and donations. At once again, we have a basket full of uh, <laughs> donations. <laughs> Someone want to take those? Sure. Um, I would like to make a motion. To accept with gratitude a gift of $50 from the North Reading Middle School Parents Association to offset the cost of the North Reading Middle School Staffing Meeting Winners Luncheon. Second. Motion made, seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. I would like to make a motion. Um, to accept with gratitude the cleaning and organization supplies with the total value of $122.77 from the donorschoice.org mm -hmm. for Jolene Danyan's classroom at the middle school. Second. Any discussion? Just a donors choose is a, it's an online um, platform where Correct. teachers, administrators can put a project up there and raise, it's almost like an educational GoFundMe Go okay. or Kickstarter. That's exactly right. Yeah. Sometimes celebrities. Yes, exactly. Yes. Any further discussion? Yeah, Katy Perry. Really? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next. I'd like to um, accept with gratitude, make a motion to accept with gratitude a total donation of $300 in checks and $540 in cash with the total being 840 from the batch elders, parents listed um, above um, for the teacher's luncheon, and the names being Scott and Jennifer Berkeley, Stephanie and Brad McGregor, Alana and Tony Rica, um, D. Sullivan and A. I'm gonna say Tarasic. Thank you. Yeah. Tarasic. Uh, Carrie Ann Beaker, Caitlin and Nick Ward, Ann Berkeley, Sarah and Andrew Stetson, Catherine Sullivan, Mark and Elena Spada, um, Vikram and Magda. Thank you. Bosley, Bosley. 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 Um, Josephi. 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 Oh, Josephi. Josephi. <laughs> One of your own kind. Yeah. Come on. It's usually spelled with the G. Um, yeah. Um, and Aaron uh, Lanzi. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, yeah. You're on your own. Uh, Yuri. Yuri and Natalia. Natalia. Andrew Sishin. Thank you. <laughs> this is a high school student, that's right. This is a group effort. Gee, many just, crickets. Just like it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, Alberta and Sandra Russo, like Richard and Tracy um, DiGregorio, and Val DiPerio. Can I have a second? Second. Before we vote, uh, could you repeat those? Because <laughs> absolutely I, I'm not, not sure I got <laughs> Before we vote, that doesn't add up to $840. No, that, that's just the, it's, the it's, uh, ca that's just the checks. Yeah, it was there was cash. It's broken cash. down. Yeah. So we don't have the. No, we don't okay. have the cash. Yeah. Don't have cash donations. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? What do we vote? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. But we're voting on the names. We're voting on whether Janine <laughs> pronounced the names correctly. Oh, Absolutely not. And for those names I butchered, I apologize. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept with gratitude a gift of $1,989 from the North Reading Music Boosters to assist with the costs associated with the music in the park trip scheduled for May 12th um, of 2017. Question, is this the New York trip? Mm. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? I'd like to make a motion to accept with gratitude the gift of $2,130 from the Hood School Parents Association to support the cost for the multiple grade level field trips. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. I would like to make a nomination to accept with gratitude an in-kind 
product um, production cost offset of a set costume prop materials and advertising for the February 3rd and 4th um, production of Alice in Wonderland valued at two thousand nine hundred and fifty six dollars and that's from the NRMS drama club yes okay. discussion all in favor Aye. Aye. Yes. I would like to make a motion to accept with gratitude the donation of $3,582.19 from the North Reading High School Lacrosse um, Boosters to benefit the girls lacrosse team. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank um, you again, everybody. How much was that in total? Do you have just out of curiosity? It was five hundred for oh. three forty, wasn't it? No, no, no. The whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. Oh, I think oh, it's eight thousand. I, I think actually we have <coughs> scheduled for the thirtieth an update. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll for you up to, kind of up to date. We'll provide another year yeah. year update of in kind. It's a lot of money. Whatever. It is. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Yeah, it's probably thirteen, fifteen thousand. Yeah. If I'm looking just really quickly, yeah. just tonight. Yeah, yeah. just tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this this year has been a lot. Yeah, it's been a lot. Substantial. Next, we have subcommittee updates. Um, Ms. Finetti, you want to report on the finance plan team? Really, not much to report. Uh, no, we did. Uh, Mr. Prisco, the new chairman of the uh, Board of Selectmen, chaired the meeting. Had a couple of interesting thoughts about bringing in speakers per, for from the, the state. Meetings. I think that's uh, a good idea. Yeah, the state rep, state yeah. senator, and, and other people right. from, from the state yeah. as well. Um, we talked about uh, Chapter 70. Um, we talked about health insurance and the uh, plan with Blue Cross Blue Shield, along with the participating funding. Uh, at that time, uh, everybody had signed off on an agreement to go forward with the Blue Cross plan. Um, so I think there were a couple of units with concerns, and it may go beyond that now, but I'm not sure. But at least that was part of the discussion of the meeting. We went over the town meeting warrant. Uh, uh, there is one article. I think it's the last <coughs> article in the town meeting warrant yes. that All involves right. with the naming of this room uh, after Dr. Troughton. Correct. Uh, talked to the Board of Selectmen about that. Also had some discussions with the... Uh, um, members of the Finance Committee as well, to asking them for recommendations for that particular article. It's sponsored by the School Department, obviously, Correct. right? Yes, it is. Uh, and then I'll turn this over to Mel, but we did have a fairly thorough uh, discussion recapping the uh, bathroom situation right. too, with the bids. I th have you already talked about yeah, that? Yeah, we have. Okay. It's been in the paper, so I don't so, think we need to rehash. So we talked about that as right. well. And that was pretty much it, if Mike and No, that's right. It was a John have shorter a, than usual. It was in about yeah. an hour. Yeah, yeah about yeah. an hour. I, I just want to recommend that Mr. Venezia be the one at town meeting to... Um, handle the motion for naming this uh, room after Dr. Trout and Jerry served with him the longest amount of time and I think could could do it the most justice. He had a special relationship with David, I'd like to say. <laughs> so I think Jerry should uh, do that nomination. I'll be you, glad to do it. Okay, doing that? Yeah. 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 Question. Okay. That'll be nice. Did the town by chance find a piggy bank that they might have misplaced and there's more money that can be put towards our budget? Not no. as no. of that meeting, no. Janine. Okay. No. There was a lot of we're talk. We hoping I, we'd find $63,000. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about that elementary school uh, special ed right. position. Yeah, person, right. correct. Um, but at this time, the money has not been found. I think there's almost unanimous, it was almost unanimous agreement in the room that that's an important position that we should have. Yeah. And that if they can't come up with the money, I would hope that that's where the committee would, would put that money. I mean, I'd like to put it toward a high school teacher also, but I think the special ed position stands to maybe in the long run save us money versus a teacher. So I don't think there was any, the only thing on the bathrooms I'll say is, is they're back out to bid. We have bids coming in on June 1st. There will be a meeting on June 2nd, a joint meeting of the Athletic Facilities Committee and the um, CP, CIPC. IC, the Capital Projects Improvement Committee, CIPC. June 2nd at 3 o'clock. Who's our representative for another year or two on that? This, this, Ms. Kopke oh, is the okay. representative of the CIPC. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I think that was the only subcommittee meeting to report on, correct? I think so, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, administrative report. You, did you want to run through those meeting dates? Subcommittee meeting dates? I have. All right. I was trying to get. I was trying to go by without doing that. We have athletic subcommittee. Amazing. There's only three. On May 23rd at 12.30, Superintendent's Conference Room, Finance Planning Team, June 2nd, 8.15, Superintendent's Conference Room, Athletic Facilities Committee, June 2nd, 3 p.m., Distance Learning Lab, and that will be a joint, actually, Athletic Facilities Committee Correct. CIPC meeting. And I think to, we have tomorrow, May 16th, the SSBC meeting at 
five oh, thirty, which oh, isn't on here. Yeah. yeah, that's a so new. I think that's yeah. on here as well. Is that a new meeting yeah. added, or was that? I, mean, I that might have been no, at the, uh, That might have been added. SSBC I know that uh, SSBC yeah, tomorrow be, at five thirty. Five thirty. Fairly important meeting at five thirty. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I did know about that when I did this. I just think like And I joked earlier about that SSBC. I think we're getting close to closing the really, yeah. on this project. <laughs> We're really getting close. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could probably another two or three years. No, I'd say <laughs> another couple of months, and I would hope we're close to. We are negotiating with everybody. Yes. Like a full head of hair. <laughs> yeah, me too, John. <laughs> right? I was a young man when we started. We're full job. steam ahead. Uh, All right, so does anyone want to take a guess on the donations received to date for this fiscal year? $102,567. Remember, we have the little school play. The little school in the field. In the field. I'd say oh, 275. Oh, and the field's down, st oh, the, down below, too? Yeah. yeah. That's oh, all. God, we've got to be oh, 300000 350000 350000 That's a lot of donations. Wow. Imagine that. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And we still have six weeks. five weeks, six weeks yeah. to go in the fiscal year. And before we get to the administrative report, I, I think I've said this before, but I just want to, again, thank Michael Patrick mm -hmm. and Daniel Downs for their efforts to get that grant from the uh, state for the um, Wi-Fi at the elementary schools. Um, yes. We're saving the town between that and between some federal uh, E-rate e funds. Yep. We're saving the town 200 plus thousand dollars uh, yes. for that project. It's a $300,000 project that will end up costing the town 60. about 55,000. Oh. Yeah, and it's even down to like 40, 44, 44,000 now. Right. So again, I, I think that's important to note. Those guys did a great job. Um, when we went in, it was against some pretty tough odds that we were gonna get that money and we ended up securing it. So again, I want to note that. Okay, Mr. Mayor, administrative Thank report. you for doing that, you're right. It was a substantial amount of work with a huge payoff. So I have a few things to, um, to just mention in my administrative report tonight. Um, I, I thought I included in, in this packet tonight a letter that I had sent to one of our middle school teachers, um, Mr. Osgood, congratulating him on having been named um, one of MassQ's uh, Educators of the Month for May 2017. MassQ is something that has really emerged in our work here in the district. Um, the Computer Using Educators is what it stands for. It's kind of a statewide conference held in the fall um, at Gillette Stadium. It was this year and will be again next year. And I just, I thought it was very nice that he um, was nominated and received um, that recognition. So I, I wanted to share that with all of you. And there's, a, there's a commendation letter I, I sent to him that's copied in your packet. Who, who nominates him? The student? Uh, he was nominated by one of his peers, yeah. A peer. A peer, yeah. Um, the second thing is, to Mr. Buckley's point earlier about, um, you know, you, periodically I provide you with reports that come from the two directors of the collaboratives, the uh, North Shore uh, Education Consortium and the SEAM Collaborative. So I, I've enclosed um, those here um, for your information pursuant to um, uh, my, my uh, responsibilities as the, the district's representative. So I think in, these are, this is an opportunity where things like that might come up. So when I do these, I usually do them about three or four times a year that I would, I would call out if there was a new program being you know, kind of considered or, or coming um, to, to help address students with identified needs. And then the last thing is I just want to remind you that there is a presentation Thursday night. The Community Impact Team is hosting Dr. Ruth Poti. Um, we have just about 100 parents signed up, parents and teachers signed up to come Thursday night. She comes uh, very well recommended to me from uh, a neighboring district that, um, that had her back in the fall. And um, again, this is being sponsored by the Community Impact Team, what every parent must know about tween teen brain development. So it, um, it should be an interesting, uh, an interesting presentation on this coming Thursday, May 18th at 6.30 in the Performing Arts Center here at the Middle High School. Any correspondence, John? Excuse me? Correspondence? No, no further correspondence, and I have nothing else to report on tonight. Before we get close on future business, I, I just want to point out, um, you know, Michael talked about the $350,000, which includes the money that was donated by the community and businesses for the little school playground, the money that was donated by community and businesses for the sod and irrigation project. It doesn't include the probably more than, the more than $200,000 in federal and state money that we're bringing in to pay for the Wi-Fi. And I just want people to understand that, you know, Mr. Venezia talked about the budget stress we face every year. We, we are trying with all our might to find other sources of funds to do things that wouldn't be done. That beautiful softball field down there, 
which is there's no field better than that in this area. There's definitely not a field better in the in the Cal League, and you know that wouldn't have happened without the without the generosity of the community and businesses because we didn't have the state we didn't have money from the town to to pay for it, and and I just I, I want to make it clear that you know you get this attitude. There was a letter in the paper a couple of weeks ago about all the school committee does is spend as much as it has and it, it just give it more and it'll spend it. You know what? We would because we need it. We need it. We've raised more than a half a million dollars in grants, just in grants and the $350,000 that, that Michael talked about tonight. That's well, I mean, you have to think of where would we be if we didn't have these donations. Exactly. Well, That's my point. That's my point. We would be needing to cut and, right. about this. And right. just the generosity for people to contribute to defray the cost of some of these trips for other kids. Exactly. So other kids can take these trips is unbelievable when you think about it. But it's not like we're just sitting here. We're, we're, we're working as hard as we can to find other sources to fund these things yeah. um, that in many cases should be funded by the budget, but the money's just not there. So I, I just want to... Well, I think the grant, the grant is, a, is a good example, too. You mentioned exactly. it. I mean, that's another... You know, we went out and tried to... Mitigate that cost. And they did a nice th job too about putting that in the transfer. It's a great, right. great story. Exactly. Yeah, that yeah. was helpful. I mean, little yeah. school roof. That's eight hundred. The little school roof. You know, we, we, state by being SBA. proactive on that and by yep. getting the money from the state, the state paid for half of that project. So that's right. Anyway, just keep that in mind. You know, yeah, we do. We do look for a lot of money, and we could use every cent we could get because we would like to continue. Um, and I think we run a pretty efficient oper we operation do. with There's what we have, too. There's still lots of places we want to go. Exactly. You know? exactly. Absolutely. You know, and, and I always bring up the easiest one, which is the foreign language program, which, again, it's woeful. Not the, not the program we have, not the teachers and subjects we're teaching, but the breadth and depth of the yeah. no, I, program. I would say foreign not, language and a hockey rank are probably the Hockey two. rank, yeah. That, I knew that was... <laughs> you you moved hockey rank to second? Huh? Hockey rank was first yeah. a couple of days ago. <laughs> You're just trying to pander to your uh, your base out there, I know. Okay, uh, upcoming future business. Uh, we have May 30th regular meeting. That's a Tuesday night. That'll be at the little school when we conclude our, our five school Correct. tour this year. The town meeting is June 5th. The school committee will meet at 6.30 in the superintendent's conference room prior to town meeting at 7. Then June 12th at 6.30. We will meet here and June 19th at 6.30. And then we'll set up our summer schedule, and which will include our goal setting. So I have, for the May 30th meeting, I will have in there two proposed dates, okay. summer meetings, for you to talk about. All right. Why Any? are we having it almost back to back to back? It's a town meeting, I think. Right? Yeah, but the oh, 12th and then the, again the 19th. But then we'll only meet once in July and um, once in August, right? Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I saw that when I laid them out that it's every Monday in, in June. I, I don't know how that... It, I mean, I created the calendar for you. I mean, the there's nine nothing else going on in June. Do we need them? All? You may not need the 12th, quite honestly. Oh, up to the chair. Um, if we don't need the 12th, that's up. You may not. Do you realize well, I cut the, my the, trip today the, short for that? The 30th you need. <laughs> Why don't we meet the 26th instead it's of the It's one of the few meetings Scott can make, so we we'll <laughs> probably keep that on the... <laughs> I, I cut my trip really short, really <laughs> short so I could be up that 12th <laughs> meeting, by the way. <laughs> Maybe maybe right? the, 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 the 19th yeah. and the 26th, I have the, I might, I mean, we could probably combine that into one meeting on the 19th. We have a meeting on the 26th, too? Meeting on the 26th? Why do we have a meeting on that? Because typically the last two meetings are back to back and you do the elementary school improvement plan. Oh, because this is, this, and is, and this is crazy. We have the 5th, the 12th, the 19th, and the 26th. It's because tw town meeting yeah. is on that Monday. I would skip the 19th and do the 12th and the 26th. There you go. When is the last And I get back for that. There you go. The 22nd. So we, yeah, Consider we, it done. We have May 30th, so it's like right, five. So we're, we're right. 5, 12, and then 26. Yeah. Five, five, the 5th is town meeting, right. and you'd meet the 12th and the 26th and not the 19th. Right. right. Okay. All right. Consider Anything. it done. Anything else? Thank you. Thanks. Scott, Mr. Buckley, you survived first meeting? Survived. I know you're happy to not be sitting next to me, but. <laughs> we won't see him again until July. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Mr. Buckley has a. He has a pre-planned business trip that before he knew he was even running for selectman, never mind that he was going to win the selectman seat. Um, I'm not on the selectman. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me in that. So I was hoping it was a selectman seat, <laughs> school committee seat. Okay. So he won't be with us for a meeting or two, but he'll be back. One meeting. One meeting. One meeting. Congratulations. But he will return. I don't think we need wow. this if it's gone for two weeks. And I cut it short a day to be back on the 12th. And if you cut the 12th no. meeting. I might just no, we're going to meet on the 12th. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming All right, back. anything else? 
I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good night. Good night.